Hey guys, it's Mark and Harry here from Shotkit and I've got a tip for you today that will save you um, up to 75% of file size on your photos that you export from Lightroom. Um, this is a tip that I got from attending a Jeff Newsom workshop uh, and I've added my little twist to it at the end that it will save you even more uh, off your images. Um, so I will get into it right now. Um, so I've selected 10 photos, gone to export and then um, I've selected, just to save time, one of my presets um, that I changed the name of the file to just so that we can remember um, easily which is which. So for example, I called this one 100, which means that I'm leaving the quality at 100. And um, the size, because I'm running off a smart preview here, the maximum size that you can output at is 2560 by 1709. So just ignore what it says there. Um, sharpening, I've left that set to high in screen. Uh, and then metadata, we won't touch on that. Watermarking, we won't touch on that. JPEG menu, I'm gonna remove this because I just want it to um, use uh, just the Lightroom default export settings uh, in terms of compression. So then I will, uh, oh, I already have, I'd export that. Um, and those 100, those um, file names named 100 are in this folder here. Uh, and then I've done the same thing, this time reducing the quality to 76. Now, why 76, you might ask? Um, Jeff found uh, online somewhere that uh, reducing the, the quality of the JPEGs in Lightroom to 75 um, actually had no visible degradation in the file, uh, in the quality of the image. Um, so he's just chosen to run with 76 just to be sure. Um, so I've trusted him there and I've just gone for 76 as well. Um, so for the second test, I've kept all the other factors the same and then exported to a folder which I've named 76 that we'll have a look at later. And then just as an additional thing to this tip, I've done exactly the same exports using the 100 uh, quality um, and run it through JPEG Mini, um, which is this software um, that I've talked about in ShotKit before. Uh, it blows me away every time I use it because it reduces JPEGs so much without um, degrading their quality whatsoever, um, visually anyway. So um, I'll talk about that. I've talked about that in, in the past on ShotKit. I'll link to it from this blog post if you want to check that out. But um, there's also a Lightroom plugin um, and I've exported those 100 quality files uh, through the that JPEG Lightroom JPEG Mini Lightroom plugin, and I've done the same thing with the 76 uh, quality files. Um, so it's getting a bit, little bit confusing, but basically these files folders on the left are um, just straight out of Lightroom, just changing the quality. So 100 to 76, and then these folders on the right contain the same files, but just running them through the JPEG mini software just to see how much extra uh, file size I can shave off those individual files. So imagine that I've just exported all that and we're left with these folders here. Um, so I'll first of all open up these first set of images. These are 100 at 100 quality. Um, so if we just scroll through a few of these, um, what I'll do for you is open up one where there's a bit of detail, so this ring shot, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, um, just like that, close Lightroom, just get it out of the way. Um, so that's 100, I'm just going to put it up in this corner, just with the ring visible, rings visible, um, and then we've got, what's next, 76. Let me just rearrange these folders. So we've got 100 in the corner, 76, the same file, which is this one. Zoom in once and make it a bit smaller on the screen. So there you see already, this is Jeff's original tip. Um, there's, it's hard to tell um, on the video because uh, YouTube's obviously compressing these images as well. Um, but uh, I will put them in the post so you can have a bit of a peek at them. Uh, but yeah, take it from me, I can't tell these files apart. They're pretty much identical. And as soon as they're on the web and you've resized them even smaller, um, I'm pretty sure no one will be able to tell them apart. So then if we move on to the um, 100 quality through JPEG Mini, uh, the exact same file, 
zoom in. Um, we'll put that one up there. Um, it's pretty much identical again. And then finally, so this last folder, 76 quality running through JPEG Mini as well. This is going to give you the smallest file size um, for a JPEG that with no visible loss in quality. Whoops, wrong one. Okay. So just putting them all on the screen there for you. I know it's not a very scientific comparison, but then again, these are all going to be on, on the web and the only people that are going to be looking at them are obviously just going to be looking at them as they appear. There's not going to be people zooming in on them to see if all the qualities there, all the, uh, sorry, all the information's there. Um, and the files that you deliver to your clients as well, as, as long as they reproduce properly when they come to print them, um, then they will be happy as well. Uh, so, it's difficult to see on the video, as I said, but just take it from me. All these files look identical. Um, if I just close them all and we go to the original 100 quality file, um, so that ring shot, for example, it was 2.8 megabytes. Then at 76 quality, the identical file is 950. So that's a third of the size with no visible loss in quality. Um, now if we look at the 100 JPEG mini, um, that is 1.1 megabytes. So as you can see, just by running it through uh, Lightroom at 76 quality, you're getting a smaller file than you are by um, running it through JPEG mini at 100 quality. But then, um, this is my part of the tip. If you run it at 76 quality through JPEG Mini, you end up with a file size of 796. So if you compare that to the original uh, 100, that is one quarter the size. So just to sum up, if you use 76 quality in Lightroom to export, then you can save up to a third in the file size. And if you use that in conjunction with JPEG Mini, then you can save up to 75%, which I think is incredible and makes all the difference if you are using smaller sized USB thumb drives to deliver your files to your clients. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'll be back with some more tips soon. Cheers.